as we gather to worship God through readings and through carols this Christmas time. We give thanks to God because despite all of the restrictions and despite the fact that we're having to worship through and enjoy this carol service at home, we hope that you do uh, feel drawn nearer and closer to Jesus. Maybe you could take some time um, and pause this as you light some candles around and create an atmosphere as it would be in church. Maybe we could just take time together to worship and to celebrate Christmas. And so as we do that, as we gather together to proclaim the good news, as we gather together to receive the good news of God's kingdom coming, to hear the good news of Jesus, we pray that his peace and his promise would pervade this land. We pray for his blessing and his hope to fill our lives as we worship him together. We seek to remind ourselves of the good news of the Christmas story, the promise of Jesus' coming then as he did in a stable and again of his return later and we pray that god would grant mercy and peace to all of his people over this christmas period so as we do that we're going to light our advent candles as doug and sue light them for us and remind us why we celebrate advent with candles. When we light the fourth candle of Advent, it kindles the flame of joy, reminding us of the great joy that is to be found in God. The joy we can have even in tough times. The joy of the knowledge that Jesus is always there with us. We remember the great joy Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her the good news and we ask God to fill us with joy as we remember to the birth of Jesus the Messiah. Mary was a young, strong, spiritual woman. Even though her life was not easy, she heard God's voice and said, yes. Her song was a prayer that would uplift those who were downtrodden. Her lyrics shattered the proud and called the world to change. She would bear within her the promised child, Jesus, the light of the world. And so the four candles are lit reminding us of love and peace and hope and joy that Jesus brings to us this Christmas time. And as we have lit our candles, so we pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, blessed is Gabriel who brought good news. Blessed is Mary, your mother and ours. Bless your church preparing for Christmas and bless us, your children, who long for your coming. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever, forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. 
So we pray the collect for this fourth Sunday in Advent. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading is from the book of Micah. The Lord says, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, you are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but out of you I will bring a ruler for Israel, whose family line goes back to ancient times. So the Lord will abandon his people to their enemies until the woman who is to give birth has her son. Then his fellow countrymen who are in exile will be reunited with their own people. When he comes, he will rule his people with the strength that comes from the Lord and with the majesty of the Lord God himself. His people will live in safety because people all over the earth will acknowledge his greatness and he will bring peace. Amen. Verses 26 to 38. The angel Gabriel announces the birth of Christ to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God 
to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7 the birth of Jesus in those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
The reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. reading is from Matthew chapter 2 verses 2 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. But 
Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warmed in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. As we come together in the name of Christ, we pray for the world he came to save. Lord God, as Christmas comes each year, we are tempted to say, we have heard all this so many times before, we know the story off by heart. Lord, remind us of the difference between knowing the story and knowing the one the story is about. Help us to see ourselves and our attitudes lived out by the people in the Christmas story and help us to embrace the good news of God's love to a needy world. God of love, grant our prayer. We think of Mary and Joseph who gave their lives to you and who did all that you asked of them so that through Christ Jesus, Emmanuel, you might show your love for the whole world in this generation to work together for justice, freedom and peace. God of love, grant our prayer. We think of the angels who proclaim the birth of Jesus with a song of joy and peace on earth among those whom he favours. Lord, may your love bring peace and joy in and through us. Help us to surrender our lives to you and to see you in each person. God of love, grant our prayer. We think of the shepherds on the hillside who heard the music of your coming even while they worked. Life's path is never easy and this year has felt an uphill struggle for many. We pray for all in special need, for the sick, for the anxious, for the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved, that the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. God of love, grant our prayer. We think of the wise men from the east who journeyed far to find you and who heeded the dreams that you gave to them. Grant to us a will like theirs, the will to seek you, a desire to listen to you, to worship you and to give you our most precious gifts of all, ourselves. God of love, grant our prayer. Mary, my betrothed. 
You have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. And the sweetest smile. Don't be afraid. I'm the Lord's servant. Help us! Please! Lady, I believe your son is the promised king of his people. What is his name? His name is Jesus. This reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, beginning at chapter 1, verse 1. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone 
was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. So as we just pause for a minute in the midst of hearing the story, as we've heard the story told and we've sung our carols, let's just pause and think. What are the traditions that you enjoy celebrating at Christmas time? What are the things that you have always done year on year? And what maybe you aren't able to do this year? because of the restrictions that we celebrate Christmas in. Uh, I usually make our Christmas cake, if I make one, I make it just after my birthday, which is at the beginning of October. It's a tradition. We hang up our stockings. We've all got one in our family. It's a tradition. We do things in certain ways, don't we? And we establish rituals and traditions around Christmas and around the Christmas time. They take a moment to grow and they take years and years to break. So when I was younger, uh, we always had this um, cotton wool snowman thing that my grandma used to make. And inside of it, she'd put little presents and that would go on our Christmas table. When we get together as a huge family at Christmas, which doesn't happen very often anymore, but when we do that, guess what we have to do? because it doesn't feel like Christmas without that snowman with, packed with presents. We celebrate Christmas in our own individual ways. And when we look around our homes, we see all of that. And when we think about when we come into church, we see the traditions of a Christmas that has come into being over the years in this country. Things like Mary wearing blue. Well, she almost definitely didn't wear blue, but has ended up wearing blue because she has been deigned as being the most important lady. And when pa paintings were being done, blue was really expensive to colour your paint. And so Mary is dressed in blue. The stable probably wasn't a stable, it was much more likely to be a roadside or underneath a home where they kept the animals at, as well. And yet we, we create this story around what has happened. We celebrate Epiphany a couple of weeks after Easter, after Christmas, and even at Christmas we tell the story including the, those wise men. And yet they probably weren't there for at least another couple of years. Christmas trees that we have didn't come into being and come as a useful celebration until 1841. And the Advent wreath itself wasn't around until 1500s. And yet, within all of these things, we celebrate Christmas because of Jesus. And whatever we do this Christmas and however we celebrate and however difficult it might be, Jesus is still the reason that we are celebrating Christmas. He is still the one who came to give us life, to give us hope and peace, to fill our lives with that knowledge of God's love. Jesus is the one that we celebrate for. In the reading from John, there's lots of things about who Jesus is. And one of those things is about him being a, 
coming from the Father, full of grace and of truth. And as we begin to think about Christmas Day and when we celebrate on Christmas Day, when we pause maybe for the Queen's speech, when we're sat around the table with turkey and with crackers, when we open our presents, we are to remember that Jesus came for a new way of living light in the dark and the confused world. He came to show us the way from God. He came full of grace and truth to help us to follow a relationship with God. Christmas is a time, isn't it, when we retell that story time and again. And maybe because it gets told time and again, we forget the simplicity of what happened. We try and find different ways to tell it. We try and find different things to remind ourselves about. But the simplicity of the fact that Jesus is the reason that we celebrate Christmas is the one to hold on to. He is the one that came to bring life to the old and to the new. Full of grace, free and merited favour of God. God's blessing for salvation in his son. Full of truth, the reality that of that. Jesus' life wasn't make-believe. He didn't live in a world of fantasy. He lived a life that was full of reality, a life that we can be living now. He lived a life that was full of the love of God. And so this Christmas, as we continue with maybe some of our old traditions that we're able to do, as we perhaps do things slightly differently, as we discover new ways that maybe we do enjoy and that are good ways of celebrating Christmas, it's important to take some time to remember that Jesus came to bring life. And he came to give us love. He came to show the way to the Father. And we can meet him when we turn to him and say, Jesus, just want to know you. As we accept and follow him, as we discover more about him, he fills us more and more with the light and the life of God. Our Advent ring, when we light each candle, we're reminded of the love that Jesus brought came, the love that he brought into this world, the peace that he brought into this world that comes beyond even our own understanding. The hope that he brought, and particularly at this time as maybe we're feeling really hopeless, we can look to Jesus for that hope of life in him. And the joy that he brought, that despite how difficult life can be, if we know Jesus, we can know that peace, that joy within that goes beyond our understanding. And on Christmas Day, we will light that middle candle, that candle that declares that Jesus is the light of the world, lighting a way for us to see, to see how to care for one another and how to live. And this Christmas time, maybe more than ever, as we're doing things differently, Maybe there's an opportunity to just pause and to ask Jesus to help us to celebrate and to be that light as he is a light in our lives. To share his light to others, to care and to love and as we celebrate. So let's pray. Loving God, as we have gathered this day, to tell your story through carols and through the words of the Bible. 
we pray that that story of your love and your gift to us would come into being in our lives and that we might be that light and that love to others. We ask this in your name. Amen. declare the good news of Jesus' birth. And as we draw our service to a close, may I wish you a Merry Christmas, whatever you might be doing. May you know the peace and the hope, the love and the joy of Jesus this Christmas time. And may Christ, the Son of God, fill you with his grace, his love, his peace and his joy this Christmas time. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Merry Christmas.